Getting the Dirt on Soils, an adapted presentation from Dr. David Limbo, NC State University Professor and Director of Soil Science Division, with Durham Soil and Water. What are four things we can't live without? Well, that's kind of easy. We need soil, air, water, and sunlight to live. Without soils, we'd be hungry, homeless, and naked. So let's start off with what is soil? What does it mean to you? Does it have any special meaning to you? Before answering these questions, let's consider something. Are soil and dirt the same thing? The answer to that is no. Dirt is a four-letter word we won't be using when discussing soils. Dirt is simply displaced soil, like what you find beneath your fingernails or what you sweep off the floor. And soil is so much more than just dirt. So let's consider some facts about soil first. Topsoil is the most productive layer of soil. Five tons of topsoil spread over an acre is only as thick as a dime. Soil supplies water and nutrients for plants, and most of our food comes from soil. It can take more than 500 years to form one inch of topsoil. An acre of corn gives off 4,000 gallons of water a day in evaporation. Soil scientists have identified over 70,000 different soil types in the United States. Erosion of soil clogs rivers and lakes and is actually North Carolina's number one pollutant problem. Soils also influence the lifespan of roads. And let's not forget, soil is alive. One gram of soil contains up to a billion bacteria. There are many and thousands of types of bacteria that live in soil. 15 tons of soil per acre pass through earthworms each and every year. Soil is also the largest single wastewater treatment unit in North Carolina. Four million North Carolinians rely on soil to treat and disperse wastewater. It's an extremely effective wastewater treatment method. And best of all, soil makes great mud pies and it's just plain fun to be in. But what exactly is soil? Well, soil is a porous natural body of minerals, air, water, and organic material that changes or has changed in response to climate, topography, time, and organisms. Now this is just a textbook definition. What we can gather from it is that soils are dynamic and reflect the conditions that they are formed under. And because of this, we can use their morphology to understand more about the environment. So we already talked about this a little, but soils are made of minerals or inorganic material of different textures. They're also made of organic materials, which can be composed of living organic material like earthworms or dead organic material like dried leaves and sticks. We also know that soils are comprised of pore space and in those pore spaces are air and water. So when you're breaking down the parts of a soil body you can account for about 50% of it to be composed of that pore space that contains water and air and the remaining uh, soil composition to be filled with organic material and minerals. Let's talk a little bit about conserving soil through best management practices. Best management practices, or BMPs, are activities that farmers and suburban and urban landowners can use to help conserve soil and water resources. BMPs are very effective when installed according to design parameters and properly used and maintained. This is a list of the BMPs we're going to talk about today. Let's start with animal waste management. Animal waste management is the handling and recycling of animal waste in an environmentally responsible manner. Animal waste management plans should seek to use nutrients of these waste products for the highest or best benefit of the farmer by application to cropland, pasture, or hayland. 
Application of animal waste to the land at the proper time using the proper management techniques and in the proper amounts provide nutrients for plant growth and improve soil health. It also reduces the expense of fertilizer and improves soil quality by adding organic material to the soil. Conservation tillage Conservation tillage refers to the no-till, strip-till, minimum-till, ridge-till, and sod planting. For maximum benefits from conservation tillage, crop residue must be left as surface mulch. This can be dead residue from prior year's crop or residue of grasses and or legumes that are killed with herbicides. The amount of mulch should be sufficient to cover at least 30% of the soil surface and should be evenly distributed. This mulch reduces soil water evaporation and erosion and orga adds organic matter. The next planting season, the crop is planted through the mulch without plowing the soil. Contour farming tillage. Contour farming is the practice of performing tillage on a nearly level grade following the curves of the terrain. This creates small dams and diversions that slow the flow of water flowing downhill and sends it along the contour with the row. The, this practice allows the water to slowly seep into the soil for plants to use. It also reduces plant nutrient losses, improves surface water quality, and reduces soil erosion. Contour farming normally requires less fuel and power since farming operations will be on nearly level elevations. Cover crops. Cover crops are crops that are planted in the fall after the previous crop is harvested to get a growing plant cover on the bare fields. This cover crop protects the bare soil during winter. Cover crops are commonly used after low residue crops such as tobacco, cotton, peanuts, and vegetables where the previous crop may not have left sufficient quantities of residue on the surface. Cover crops are usually a small grain that may be harvested during the next year or turned under to provide organic material for the soil or used as cover to plant no-till crops. Cover crops provide protection against soil erosion and runoff. Crop residue management. Crop residue management is the practice of cutting up and leaving the unharvested crop remains on top of the ground during the harvesting process to provide ground cover. This cut up material is called residue. The plant materials provide mulch which, help, which helps break up and the impact of rain hitting the soil and slows down runoff allowing more of the rainwater to soak into the soil. Sufficient crop residue on the surface also reduces the hazards of wind and water erosion as well as soil compaction. Crop rotation. Crop rotation refers to a planned cropping sequence where different crops are planted in consecutive years. Included are rotations that contain grasses and legumes as well as field crops. Some of the important objectives are to reduce soil and water losses, maintain or improve physical, chemical, and biological conditions of the soil, and aid in controlling weeds, insects, and diseases. A cropping sequence should be based upon the limitations of the land if it is to provide the needed treatment for soil and water conservation. Diversion. A diversion is an individually designed channel running across a hillside to divert the moving rainwater out of the field and into an area where the water can be filtered before contaminating surface water. A diversion is used in areas where there is excessive runoff to help reduce the hazard of rill and, gu and gully erosion. Field borders. A field border is an area of grass or other permanent vegetation on the outside of a cropped field used to reduce sediment, organics, nutrients, pesticides, and other contaminants from runoff and to maintain water quality. Field borders intercept undesirable contaminants from runoff before they enter a water body. They provide a buffer between a contaminant source such as crop fields and streams and ponds. Field borders slow the velocity of water, allowing the suspended soil particles to settle out. In addition, 
to their water quality benefits, field borders allow for travel and turnaround of farm equipment. These areas can also be beneficial for wildlife like quail, turkey, rabbits, deer, and predators. Filter strips. Filter strips are strips of permanent vegetation planted to filter out sediment and other pollutants from rainwater runoff. They are usually planted above and around ponds, lakes, man-made channels, and other sensitive areas. Filter strips filter out pollutants from the water such as sediment, nutrients, pesticides, and debris. The close-growing grasses allow the movement of water while trapping sediments. Sometimes wildlife plantings are used in conjunction with a grass in these filter strips. Grass and Legumes in Rotation Grasses help hold the soil in place. Their roots underneath the soil and the blades on top break up the erosive force of the raindrops and slow down surface runoff. In addition, legumes help provide nitrogen through nitrogen fixing nodules on their roots. These best management practices are particularly effective when used together in a conservation system. For example, contour farming with strip cropping, grassed waterways, filter strips, diversion, field borders, no-till, sod-based rotation, and integrative pest management. Grassed waterways. A grass waterway is a natural or constructed vegetated channel that carries runoff water from a field. It's shaped and graded so that it allows the surplus of water to exit the field without causing severe erosion problems. The grass also slows down the velocity of the water, allowing most of the soil in suspension to drop out before the water exits the field. Grassed waterways convey runoff from terraces, diversions, or other water concentrations. Vegetation in the waterway protects the soil from erosion caused by concentrated flows while carrying water downslope. The stable outlet is designed to slow the spread of the flow of water before the water enters a vegetated filter. Grassed waterways are used where water concentrates and gully erosion is a problem, commonly in draws and other low-laying areas. Grassed waterways can also enhance wildlife if properly managed. Using native or adapted plant species can provide food and cover for the important wildlife. Integrated Pest Management, or IPM, reduces the amount of pesticides applied to crops. Using IPM, a knowledgeable professional scouts the crops for insects and determines the level of pest infestation and when a chemical insecticide is necessary. When the pests reach a certain level, the chemical pesticide is applied only to that particular area. If the insect infestation never reaches that level, then the pesticide is never used. This practice not only cuts down on the amount of pesticides added to the environment, but it also cuts down on soil compaction because there are fewer tractor trips. Riparian Buffers A riparian buffer is an area of vegetation located adjacent to streams, lakes, ponds, and wetlands. These buffers are important for water quality. Riparian buffers of sufficient width intercept sediment, nutrients, pesticides, and other materials in surface runoff and reduce nutrients and other pollutants in shallow subsurface water flow. The vegetation may consist of native grasses, flowers, shrubs, and trees. Woody vegetation in the buffer provides food and cover for wildlife, helps lower water temperatures by providing shade, and slows out-of-bank flood flows. Sod-based rotation. Growing different crops in recurring succession in the same field is called crop rotation. If one of these crops is a grain or other close-growing crop, which establishes a sod base, and if this grain crop or cover crop is rotated, then this becomes a sod-based rotation. You get very little erosion from a field with a thick cover crop forming a sod base. This practice effectively cuts down the erosion rate by one half if the sod base crop is rotated every other year. Sod base rotations are used in farmed areas containing erodible soils.
Soil testing. Soil testing is an effective means of identifying the amounts of essential plant nutrients in the soil. A lack of sufficient nutrients can reduce yields. After reviewing the data from soil tests, a landowner can apply only the amount of fertilizer required for the planned crop. This can save the farmer money because it will eliminate the extra expense of buying and applying fertilizer that is not needed. Soil testing can also be environmentally friendly by eliminating the application of excessive nutrients that can run off or leach into nearby streams. Soil testing results will also show the pH of the soil and can be used to identify fields that may need to be limed. Soil testing should be done on an annual basis. In North Carolina, the North Carolina Department of Agriculture provides free soil tests. Strip cropping. Strip cropping is growing crops in a systematic management of strips or bands to reduce erosion. Strips on the contour are called contour strip cropping, and strips across the predominant slopes are called field strip cropping. One of these crops is usually a row crop that has a higher rate of erosion, and the second strip is typically a grass or other close growing crop that has a lower rate of erosion. The sediment-filled water leaving the row crop strip deposits the soil particles when the water is slowed down in the close-growing strip. Field or contour strip cropping can reduce erosion by 65-75% to 75 on a 3-8% to 8 slope. Terraces Terracing involves constructing several embankment ridges of soil along the contour to control runoff, and to break up the slope into smaller sections. These terraces collect the rainwater running down the slope. The ridge of the terrace forces the water to move along the contour where it slowly soaks into the soil or is channeled into a grass waterway or other conveyance to leave the field. The land area between two terraces represents a field since the water can go downhill no further. This is what we call breaking up the slope. Sometimes terraces are put in place parallel to each other. These are called parallel terraces. Water control structure. Water control structures are usually wood or metal doors placed in drainage canals to manage water. Water control structures are designed so that planks can be removed to let more water flow out in times of high rainfall or added to store more water in drier times. This structure is also effective in retaining nutrients and allowing aquatic plants and algae to take up and use nutrients while breaking down pesticides into harmless components. Windbreaks. Windbreaks are long rows of trees planted adjacent to large agricultural fields. These rows are usually planted perpendicular to the dominant direction of the wind. Windbreaks help protect the soil from wind erosion by slowing down or breaking up the wind. They are commonly used in areas with large fields, sandy soils, and high prevailing wind. In North Carolina, windbreaks are seldom needed outside of the coastal plain. Two of the trees often used in windbreaks are the eastern red cedar and the loblolly pine. So what are some key components that we can take away from today's lesson? Remember, when we're talking about soil, keep it covered, keep it alive, keep it diverse, and don't disturb it. These are all important points because we want to be able to decrease erosion, increase water filtration, increase the organic matter in our soil, increase the biology, decrease the inputs, and increase the profits.